We're with Martin from Culper Precision Engineering in Watford. Now, first of all, big fans of Citizen Machines, is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. How long you had them? Uh, we've had them here for about 20 years. Okay. What was the first one you had? Uh, it would have been a B12. B12, and then since you haven't looked back since? No, no, they've, uh, they've developed quite well and, yeah, uh, yeah produced some good parts. So why do you like them so much? Uh, well, they're flexible machines and the idea that we can um, put a three metre bar in one end of the machine, get a nice complex part out the other end, completely finished. Okay, so no problems, in you know you can run it sort of 24-7, there'll be no issues with that? Yeah, pretty much, depending on material. Um, if we were running titanium, we'd be a bit wary because <laughs> of the cost of it. But other than that, no. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Because you're running all sorts of materials here. Yeah, we're, uh, as we're a subcontractor, we're running anything from sort of brass, copper, stainless steel, um, aluminium, mild steel, pretty much everything across the board. Yeah. And not an issue with the citizen machines at all? No, no. no. Now I notice here on, on this machine you've got the Fanuc control, but other ones have got Mitsubishi, is that right? That's right, yeah, but Fanuc and Mitsubishi are virtually the same. So right, no so no issues changing between the two then? No, not at all. Okay, now this is your latest acquisition, the A20, so call me Einstein here, running 20 mil bar? Yeah, 20 mil, but we can go up to 7, 8, so 22 mil. So the machine itself, twin spindle, how many tools? So we've got 26 tools in this machine. Okay, and how many of those are driven? 10 tools are driven. Okay. Now, the machine itself, wh wh why was the reason you bought this A20 though? There was a specific reason. Yeah, the main reason is because we do a lot of plastic and um, generally with the plastic on the sliding edge with the guide bush, you have to get the bar ground. So um, sometimes you're looking at four week lead time to get the bar ground. Okay. So, uh, you know, then the customers are chasing. So this sort of eliminates that to a degree. Okay. So take the guide bush out, you can just run the bar without any, any issue with grinding? Yeah. And you mentioned plastic, but that's the same with your aluminiums and brass, etc. Yeah, just the um, some of the L168 generally you have to grind, but other than that, yeah. uh, it's just the plastic. Okay. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility and saves lead time and cost then. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously the cost with the grinding is gone now. Yeah. Okay, mine. Any other sort of benefits of having the guide bush, non guide bush option? Uh, well, obviously the bar ends are a lot shorter, so we're saving our money. Um, we do a lot of brass, so it does make a big difference. Absolutely, yeah, saving money there every single time. Now, what I want to do now is we had a quick chat about the machine. I want to see what you actually make on it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we've got some parts here. It's a very simple part here. Um, we could do this on any machine, but um, yeah, this would run all weekend, no problems at all. Even bank holiday weekend? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so like I say, relatively simple part, but you know that this machine will just keep running and running and running. Yeah, yeah pretty much. And holding tolerant? Absolutely. Okay. Now, next part looks a bit more tricky. Yeah, so this is a nice little part. Um, there's, a, there's a mill profile on the front of this one. Um, quite a bit of milling. Again, this is plastic, whereas before we'd have to pay the grinding cost, etc. Uh, and this runs, again, this will run all night. Um, with a swarf, we can um, run various macro programs to chip the swarf up. Okay. So, uh, yeah, nice little job. So you, have, you haven't actually got LFE, the low frequency vibration, but you can run a macro to make sure. Yeah, so we'll generally sort of do loads of little peg cycles yeah. to break the swarf up. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, now one more, well, got a couple more parts here which look quite good. Yeah, there's a couple of parts here that fit together. Obviously a plastic one and an aluminium one. Um, again, the, um, the plastic one, there's quite a bit of milling on it. Um, and the aluminium one, Obviously, we wouldn't need the, uh, the guide bush list for that, but just another part we do on this machine. Yeah, nice little pass. And what's the, uh, the final part you're going to showcase yeah, this us? One's, this one's made of acrylic, so this would have actually been ground. Um, so we're saving money with that. Um, and this runs a treat on this machine. So this is quite a nice, complex part. Yeah. No, look, they're great examples of what you could do on this machine, plus the cost savings as well in terms of the grinding. So another sort of thing with Citizen, how's their support? Yeah, very good. Um, the fact that they are of about half a mile up the road really helps as well. <laughs> That's right. So if there are issues, you could just go and knock on their door. Yes, very much so. But I'm assuming that doesn't happen very often. Not very often. <laughs> okay, so just a quick summary of why you bought this machine then, please, Martin. Um, like we said, the plastic uh, was a big thing for us. Um, the brass, where we're saving uh, on the shorter remnants. Um, the garbage, garbage less. This is our first garbage, garbage less machine. So basically saving money, music to any engineer's ears. Yeah, definitely. Mine, thank you very much.